So this one's not going to be heavily edited very much at all. Um, for those who've heard me tell the story before, I ended up in this community because one day the YouTube homepage fed me a video from Ross Carlos, a TLTG, and it was his review for Paisley Sky from Happy Land Studios. Now, I don't know why it sent me this video. Uh, I wasn't seeking out fragrance content. I owned a bunch of fragrances, and when I say a bunch, at that time, it was like five, if 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 that many, right? Um, I was a normal, you know? I was a normal back then. I wasn't one of us. And uh, I watched him do this review, and he sprayed Paisley Sky, and trust me, I spent a day trying to find this particular video so I could show you what I'm talking about. I was not successful, and I think if you look here, you'll see why. There's a lot of Happy Land content on Ross's page. And uh, when he sprayed it the first time in that video, he said, Oh, it just makes me so happy. And ridiculously, I thought to myself, well, I want to be happy too. I want, what is that? I like that label. I mean, I don't like hippies, but I like that label. I like the design. And so I ordered it. And if you're familiar with my channel, you will know the adoration that I have for Paisley Sky. But it didn't end there. You know, I heard people talking about how great Happy Land's signature was, so I bought that, and they were right. And then El Gudo, and they were right. And I continued to buy Happy Land fragrances because the price did not match the quality. These were reasonably priced fragrances that were stellar. They were amazing. They were like nothing you were going to buy in a retail outlet like Macy's or any of the places that I had known as a, let's just call it a civilian before Fragcom. And I'd always hear people talk about E.J. Wells of Happy Land Studios, the maestro, as it were, the man who composed all of these fragrances that everybody loved. And again, this is me as a civilian. I'm watching these videos. I don't have any tie to this community. And Happy Land Studios around June or July of 2021 announces Shameless, the first freshie from Happy Land. And I don't like freshies. Uh, <laughs> my, my woman loves freshies. So sometimes you got to keep them happy, you know. And I thought, well, this guy's killed it with everything I bought. Maybe he's going to kill it here, too. And so I ordered Shameless. And for whatever reason, I got my bottle before seemingly anyone else. And I was a part of the Happy Land Facebook group. And people kept saying, somebody's got to have it. We need a review. And I thought, well, what the hell? I'll throw up a review meaningless as it would be since I don't have any expertise. And there it was. My first YouTube fragrance review. July 12th, 2021. Now, I don't know how valuable it was because I don't know that I knew what I was talking about. In fact, I still don't think I know what I'm talking about. But it was the best I had to offer you. I told you it smelled like a bunch of oranges punching you in the face. And I still think that's kind of accurate. And I also said you probably wouldn't get any compliments from it because I never get any compliments from fragrances and I thought it was all a lie. And that might still be kind of accurate too. But that's what I had to offer. And I said I would never do a review after that one. On July 13th, I received the following message in my Facebook Messenger inbox. And after a brief back and forth of me explaining that, well, I don't know that this is for me, 
he convinced me that eh, it would be fun. And besides, the community could use somebody who doesn't take it all so seriously. And in the time since then, I've done a lot of Happy Land reviews. But always with the understanding between EJ and I that if I didn't like something, if I didn't feel that it was up my alley, I just would not do a review. You can take that however you want. I've had people say, well, then you're not a real reviewer. Well, then I'm not a real reviewer. I don't much care. I told you about the things that I really enjoyed. Until recently. You know, uh, in the spring, my girlfriend was diagnosed with some health issues. And I told EJ, I won't be doing reviews for a while. But that didn't stop EJ from sending me whatever he released with the full understanding that there was going to be no review. There was going to be no payoff, as it were. You know, this community likes to talk about shills and all that kind of stuff. Well, I was being sent things without any expectation at all. And in the interim of all of that, while he himself was in very poor physical condition, he would message me to ask, hey, how's Allison doing? How's it all going? How are you two holding up? I want to share a message from EJ with you from September 11th as we were discussing his situation and he was asking about Allison uh, not to exploit the situation but to shed some light on the character of the man you can see here and I'm sure you can appreciate more now in retrospect of the news we all received today his first inclination was to prioritize us over himself So, for those on the outside of all of this, if you're just a casual observer and you're watching people really affected by the loss of E.J. Wells today, that's why. What you see there, that's why. Sure, he he made great fragrances. Um, That's what this community's about. But it's, it's that, the fabric of the man. Uh, the kindness he showed to strangers. I'm not a big channel. He he gained really nothing from me. Uh, but he was immediately kind to me. He immediately encouraged me to do this, to make videos, to create whatever this is. If you want to call it art, content, whatever the hell it is. And because of him, uh, and I hate this word, but I'm going to use it. I went on a journey of learning video editing to whatever degree I know it now. I don't profess to be any sort of an expert, but anything I know today, and I've learned a lot since that first shameless video, I know it because of EJ Wells. I spent time this morning talking back and forth with Ross Carlos about the loss of EJ. And I don't think I need to explain why that felt surreal and simultaneously poetic. The individual who introduced me without his knowledge to the world of Happy Land fragrances and EJ Wells was who I ended up sharing mutual dismay with regarding the loss of EJ. So I want to take this opportunity to say thanks to EJ Wells for the kindness, for the encouragement, for the conversations about movies, just all of it, the whole ride of the last two years. There's a saying derived from Shakespeare. I used it earlier in my post. We shall not see his like again. And I think the entire community feels that today. Now listen, 
if any of us have ever done a review of a Happy Land fragrance that you thought might be up your alley, but you didn't pull the trigger. Now, now is the time to do that. Go get what's left. I don't know if it's going to continue. I don't know what the plan is. But EJ's wife could use every bit of support from this community right now. And you can't go wrong with anything you're about to buy. So that's it for me. It was a little long-winded and it was unscripted. So I hope I didn't bore you to death. But... I would be remiss if I didn't give the man a fitting goodbye.